Um, I also want to uh, uh, start my presentation now with thanking the organizers uh, for um, putting together this uh, fantastic uh, event and uh, to allow me to participate in it. And my talk will be about orbital optical lattices. And, uh, well, what I mean by that is uh, <clears throat> that we are trying, we have been trying and we've been succeeding at to uh, condense atoms in higher bands of optical lattices, and this is the outline of the program I want to go through. <clears throat> I will uh, discuss uh, how we can load cold bosonic atoms into higher bands of an optical lattice, and I will uh, go across the challenges. Uh, one is to control band relaxation, <clears throat> and uh, then to form long-lived metastable condensates in higher bands. And uh, then I will uh, uh, look at the second band, and for that case, show you uh, that uh, there's an interaction-induced chiral superfluid order <coughs> that can uh, emerge there. And uh, at the end, if I have time, I will uh, give you an outlook of, uh, on how uh, the system uh, could be uh, modified uh, to uh, form topological excitations. So, well, this is my uh, view on optical lattices. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we have an optical potential uh, which you don't have to know much about uh, other than uh, it's uh, typically uh, with lattice constant on the order of micrometer and the lattice depth is microkelvin and temperatures are in the range between 10 and 100 nanokelvin. Uh, but we've seen many talks now about optical lattices and. Uh, you probably are probably quite familiar with them already. Um, <clears throat> well, many others have said that already, uh, why they are interesting, and I will not spend time with that. Basically, uh, we try to emulate many body lattice physics, simulate electronic matter and beyond. There's uh, outstanding control, lattice geometry, dimensionality, transport, interactions, disorder, temperature, quantum statistics, <laughs> and so on, and uh, even things like uh, uh, engineering gauge fields uh, is uh, uh, very easily possible. Um, well, in a standard optical lattice uh, with bosons, uh, the, the situation is as follows. Uh, uh, your uh, ground state uh, lowest band wave function is composed of s orbitals. And here I'm sort of trying to visualize that in a, in a 2D geometry. Uh, where your wave function is uh, composed of these s orbitals uh, at your lattice sites, and if you look along uh, this trajectory here, this is what you would see. Uh, your wave function basically has an offset uh, which is positive and real, and a little bit of a wiggle which is commensurate uh, with the lattice, uh, and that, that's it. Uh, there's uh, not more. Uh, the wave function is uh, fairly simple, and uh, this is basically uh, if you want uh, a special case of a much more general uh, consideration, uh, which goes back to Feynman and is sometimes called the no-node theory. <clears throat> now, the momentum spectrum uh, in lattices like that uh, typically appears uh, in this fashion, uh, where you have a dominant Bragg peak at zero momentum, uh, corresponding uh, to the offset of that wave function, and then uh, uh, coming up from the wiggle, uh, the lattice commensurate wiggles, you have these high order Bragg peaks. Uh, that's the situation. <clears throat> now, we have asked ourselves uh, some time ago whether you might be able to uh, produce more advanced lattices with bosons by making use of the fact that there are uh, high lying bands uh, which offer orbital degrees of freedom. And, uh, well, what do you get uh, for that? Um, you have anisotrop uh, anisotropic orbitals. Uh, there's a freedom of orientation, and uh, there can be orbital degeneracy, uh, which uh, is interesting uh, because uh, if you have degenerate uh, quantum states, uh, then uh, small uh, energy scales uh, can become uh, very important in deciding uh, what your many body state is going to come out as. So uh, if you envision uh, every lattice site in an optical lattice, uh, at least. Uh, deep down in the wells uh, as a harmonic potential, uh, then this is the kind of orbitals uh, you, you have at hand. There are challenges uh, that have to be overcome, and obviously one is the control of band relaxation. Uh, you will say, it doesn't make sense to go in higher bands uh, because uh, 
atoms will collide and leave the band, and, and what then? Uh, but there are ways uh, to, uh, to deal with that, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, and uh, th that's nice. Uh, then one has to care about how to populate the higher bands with moderate uh, entropy increase. Uh, this is also important not to heat up your system uh, um, uh, arbitrarily. And uh, finally, uh, there's uh, some minor point. Uh, if you want to be able to do the condensation in higher bands, you have to make sure uh, that the transport is well established in, in all directions, uh, that uh, you have cross-dimensional tunneling uh, possible. And our solution to that has been uh, to use bipartite lattice geometries uh, with uh, tunable unit cells. And uh, this is the checkerboard geometry I'm uh, talking about uh, in this presentation, uh, where <coughs> you have a, a knob uh, to turn in the experiments, uh, which brings you uh, from this uh, conventional uh, square lattice uh, to uh, this situation or that situation, where uh, your lattice sites are divided into subclasses uh, uh, with shallow lattice sites here and deep lattice sites at the B points and vice versa. In the third axis, uh, we typically have harmonic confinement, uh, so uh, the lattice sites have tubular shape. Uh, one can also add uh, a third lattice uh, in, the, in the z direction. Now, to control band relaxation, uh, well, one has to uh, uh, be aware that in a conventional lattice, uh, where you have uh, one class of lattice sites, uh, there's a problem. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, atoms can collide, one atom uh, possibly uh, goes to some higher excited band, and the other atom goes down to a ground state, and uh, these processes uh, <coughs> are disturbing uh, because they uh, occur on a, let's say, millise millisecond time scale. However, if you uh, consider a bipartite lattice, uh, then there's something you can do about that. Uh, um, and uh, this is uh, uh, sort of seen in, in this picture. Uh, if we talk about the second band, for instance, then uh, you can arrange uh, the difference in potentials uh, for the A sites and the B sites in a way such that the lowest energy wave function in the second band has uh, sort of this form I'm showing here. Uh, there's an S orbital in the shallow wells and a P orbital in the deep wells. However, the P orbital is nearly not populated. Uh, it's there, it's part of the wave function, but it's nearly not populated. And because of that, uh, it's very hard for the atoms uh, to uh, leave the band, uh, because uh, it can only happen uh, uh, where the atoms uh, reside in the band, and this is this S orbital here, but there's basically uh, no, no match uh, with uh, 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 atoms uh, in the lowest band at this point. Whereas uh, for the P orbitals, uh, the population is very low. Here, collisions could happen uh, without problems, uh, but uh, uh, as I say, uh, there's no basically uh, no population uh, uh, in these p orbitals. And you see uh, that this gives rise uh, to uh, a very uh, uh, significant resonance. Uh, if you tune uh, delta v, uh, then you see uh, that for a certain value, uh, you get two orders of magnitude increase of the band lifetimes. Uh, so the band lifetimes go up uh, to several hundred milliseconds, and that's exactly what you need uh, to be able uh, to condense the atoms. <coughs> then later on, uh, if you've condensed the atoms uh, somewhere uh, in this uh, area here, you may tune adiabatically uh, to a situation uh, when the p orbitals are, are significantly populated, uh, and that will decrease the band lifetime uh, by some factor, say, 10 or so. Uh, but uh, for what you want to do then, uh, you don't need all that much time. <coughs> now, to populate the higher bands, uh, uh, there's a simple schema that we use. <coughs> um, well, basically, uh, we switch uh, from a situation of like that uh, to this situation, uh, and we do that with the right speed uh, such that uh, the, uh, uh, everything happens in a time uh, shorter than the tunneling time. Uh, however, uh, we are slow with respect to the, uh, the on-site oscillation time, uh, so we're not heating up the system much. Uh, and like that, uh, we can go uh, to the second band. And uh, Now, this is obviously uh, not uh, the lowest energy state of that band, uh, however, if we now Leave, uh, let the atoms uh, uh, tunnel and, and collide, uh, a condensation is observed, as I will show you later. Uh, and finally, uh, the last step could be uh, to then, uh, once that's done, adiabatically uh, go uh, to a situation with more population of the p orbitals. 
<coughs> then the th third point was uh, the requirement of cross-dimensional tunneling. Uh, well, <coughs> in order uh, to uh, allow the atoms uh, to move uh, in all directions nicely, uh, um, <coughs> uh, you should uh, sort of uh, prevent a situation like that uh, where uh, if you had p orbitals uh, in all lattice sites like that, uh, then tunneling would work well along these directions uh, where you have a sort of a, a sigma type tunneling, uh, whereas uh, p tunneling uh, between these chains uh, is uh, sort of impeded by an order of magnitude. Uh, that's not a good situation. In a bipartite lattice, uh, if you have additional s orbitals, uh, then uh, they can act as cross dimensional tunneling bonds. Uh, as you can see uh, now, it's very easy to tunnel in any direction, uh, and that's crucial uh, for the condensation uh, to be possible. Okay, so uh, the technique uh, to look at uh, uh, whether you've uh, succeeded put the atoms in higher band is band mapping. I will not uh, say much about that. Uh, probably uh, you're all familiar with that. Basically, uh, you uh, do a, a free expansion after uh, slowly uh, ramping down uh, the lattice potential, and uh, if you're in the second band, uh, then this is the kind of thing you see. Uh, you see that the atoms are uh, populating uh, to a large fraction uh, these uh, corners here, uh, and this is nothing else uh, but uh, uh, the second band uh, for our square lattice. Uh, you can address uh, all sorts of bands if you want. Uh, um, <clears throat> you see here uh, a collection of uh, uh, Brilliant zones are from your favorite uh, uh, textbook, condensed matter textbook. And here you see uh, the experimental uh, pictures uh, if you address those bands. And you see uh, there's quite a good selec uh, selectivity uh, to do that. Uh, and uh, well, uh, we will see uh, why uh, uh, not every point in these, band is in, the, in these bands are equally populated. Uh, you see how you, the higher we go up, the more the atoms uh, start to collect in certain uh, uh, k vectors, uh, and this is all, uh, nothing else but the condensation uh, that sets in, uh, which is faster the higher you go up in your band. Uh, now I want to talk about the second band uh, situation you see here, <coughs> and uh, well, that's what the second band looks like. You have two inequivalent <coughs> minima at the edge of the Brillouin zone, uh, and uh, the energy uh, of these points uh, uh, are the same uh, uh, if the 90 degree rotation symmetry is perfectly uh, adjusted, which is uh, uh, typically not the case if you just set up a lattice, uh, but uh, if you work a little bit, uh, you can control this parameter. Uh, in our experiment, uh, <coughs> we have implemented uh, the means uh, to be able to, uh, to do that. Uh, so we can change the re uh, relative energy, the energy offset between these uh, two points. <coughs> now, uh, if you look at what happens uh, once you've uh, um, excite the atoms uh, to uh, the second band, and you give the atoms time to tunnel, uh, then you see uh, that the atoms migrate uh, to, uh, in this case, uh, to one of the minima, and uh, you can guess uh, that in this case, the 90 degree rotation symmetry was not well established, uh, so the atoms uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, they, they uh, prefer uh, the, the, low, the low one of the two minima uh, available. And uh, as, that, as time goes on, um, uh, you see what happens. Uh, uh, there are more and more atoms are collecting in this minimum, but after some time, uh, a couple of hundred m milliseconds, uh, atoms uh, come back uh, to uh, the first band. Uh, you, uh, there's band relaxation setting in, uh, and the first brilliant zone is filling again. <clears throat> so now, uh, as, uh, if you do that, uh, this is the kind of momentum spectrum you see, and you immediately recognize uh, that there's no dominant uh, k equals zero momentum uh, peak here. Uh, and uh, this corresponds uh, to the fact uh, that the, uh, the uh, wave uh, function, if you want, uh, is, is a pure standing wave. It doesn't have an offset. Uh, it has nodes and anti-nodes, uh, and it's composed of p orbitals and uh, s orbitals. And uh, obviously, uh, there's uh, no k equals zero momentum involved in that. Now, if you tune uh, the energy difference uh, between the condensation points, which we can do, uh, we can go to the situation uh, when both energies uh, are the same, uh, and you see uh, that then both condensation points are equally populated. Um, well, if you have two condensates, uh, which is the case here, uh, which are superimposed uh, uh, and equally populated, uh, then immediately the question arises, uh, what is the relative phase, and is there a relative phase between these condensates at all? <clears throat> and uh, this question has, uh, um, well, motivated us uh, to 
do an interference experiment uh, to check whether there's a phase relation uh, between the two condensate, uh, condensation points at, the, at x plus and x, x minus. Uh, and uh, this is uh, sort of uh, uh, illustrated here. I have not the time uh, to go to the details. Um, <clears throat> what we do is uh, we simply slice our lattice into two sectors uh, by some blue detuned uh, cylindrically focused uh, um, uh, laser beam. Uh, and then uh, after that, uh, the, after this barrier is uh, uh, activated, uh, then we do the excitation uh, to the second band and the condensation. So we are getting uh, two uh, completely independent uh, condensates uh, above and below uh, this uh, light sheet. And after that, uh, we uh, switch everything off uh, and uh, get uh, the uh, atoms uh, from the both sectors to overlap. Uh, and well, each of those uh, sectors uh, has a lattice, uh, uh, which forms uh, Bragg peaks if you do uh, a ballistic expansion. But uh, because I have two lattice uh, sectors here, and I now get, in addition, uh, uh, along the z direction, uh, uh, a density grading uh, in my Bragg peaks. Uh, and uh, this is uh, what uh, holds the information uh, of interest. Uh, obviously, uh, since these condensates are completely independent, uh, it doesn't matter uh, where the, the spatial phase, the absolute value of the spatial phase of these Bragg peaks are. Uh, the only in interesting information is in the relative position of these gratings. So we look at these gratings from the side, uh, looking at pictures like that, and uh, then uh, we are looking at whether uh, the spatial phases of these uh, uh, gratings uh, are phase locked, uh, are uh, at the same positions or different positions from shot to shot. And what we see is uh, even though uh, these uh, two condensates uh, uh, on both sides of the light sheet are completely independent, uh, <coughs> there's obviously uh, uh, a correlation there between uh, those interference patterns. Uh, uh, in case uh, that you look at two Bragg peaks uh, coming up from different condensation points, you see uh, that uh, there's uh, a histogram uh, 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 with two peaks. Uh, and that shows you uh, that, uh, uh, well, e either uh, the interference patterns are, are exactly in phase or they are 180 degree out of phase. Uh, this is the outcome. And that tells you uh, that the relative phase between the two condensates at the x plus point and the x minus point in both sectors of the lattice uh, uh, must be uh, uh, phase locked. Uh, only uh, uh, this experiment doesn't tell you uh, what's the value of that phase, and that uh, uh, needs another experiment uh, uh, to be decided. So what is the expectation uh, about that phase? Uh, we know that phase is there, uh, but we don't know its value, and uh, well, uh, it's not hard to imagine uh, what this phase should be. Uh, you just, uh, well, look at the p orbitals in the deep wells, uh, which are both populated, and uh, if you populate them in a way, uh, uh, if you superimpose them in a way uh, that the relative phase is zero between them, uh, then you basically uh, get uh, a p orbital turned by 4 to 5 degree, looking like that. Uh, this is not uh, doing anything uh, for the system in terms of minimizing its energy. However, if you do that, uh, the, do the position by 90 degree uh, uh, with this eye here, uh, then the outcome is a, a torus. Uh, you maximize angular momentum uh, and the mode volume is increased. And because of that, uh, this is energetically favorable if you have uh, um, repulsive collisions, uh, which we have in our experiment. Uh, so the system uh, favors uh, an eye here at this point. And once you know that, uh, you can put together the expected order parameter uh, by saying in the deep wells uh, you should have px plus ipy uh, or px minus ipy. In the shallow wells you have s orbitals and the local phases are to be arranged uh, uh, in order uh, to make tunneling uh, best possible, uh, which means you have to have the same local phase uh, at the tunneling bonds. Uh, and that sets up uh, <coughs> your, your wave function. Uh, now you can uh, obviously uh, sort of uh, put that on uh, better ground uh, by looking at a three-band Hubbard uh, description, a uh, tight binding model, <clears throat> and uh, this we have done here. I don't have time to go to the details. Uh, <clears throat> important is uh, to put in the right interaction uh, that uh, you can read about in this paper. Uh, this is what we have done. Uh, <clears throat> there's also an extra term uh, that uh, allows us to tune in the model uh, what we can tune by uh, changing delta E in the experiment. 
Um, <clears throat> and uh, well, this model can be solved uh, in a mean field uh, approximation <clears throat> by saying uh, that since we know uh, that both condensates are phase locked uh, and uh, one condensate uh, uh, belongs to this point, the other to that point, so we can make a variational uh, mean field ansatz uh, by saying uh, there must be a superposition uh, of those uh, condensates uh, with some uh, weight uh, that we don't know yet uh, and with some phase uh, that we don't know yet and then uh, you minimize uh, your f uh, free energy uh, and you find this phase diagram uh, which tells you uh, that there's uh, two phases, uh, either uh, only one on the blue point is occupied or only the red point is occupied, there's a second order phase transition here uh, where time reversal symmetry is broken and you go to a phase uh, where both condensation points are occupied uh, and you get uh, your uh, chiral superposition. Um, <clears throat> well, this phase diagram suggests uh, that uh, you can make an ex do an experiment uh, to check uh, whether if you put more and more atoms into the p orbitals, this is what's shown on this axis. This is a relative, the fractional population of the p orbitals. Uh, the more atoms are in the p orbitals uh, where this uh, interaction minimizing uh, mechanism uh, works, uh, <clears throat> the more atoms are in the p orbitals, uh, the more stable uh, the chiral superposition becomes. You see you have a, a wide range here that where you can tune uh, the delta E parameter uh, so you can you can change the relative energy between the, between the condensation points without uh, uh, destabilizing the chiral, uh, the chiral phase. And this has been done uh, experimentally, uh, <coughs> and uh, this is the data here. Uh, if you tune uh, NP, this is the fractional population of the p orbitals, so the uh, delta E uh, would be that axis, and you see uh, that uh, uh, if you are uh, in the, uh, mostly in the S orbitals, uh, most of the atoms uh, occupy S orbitals, then uh, you cannot, uh, uh, well, you cannot change delta E much before uh, the uh, difference of the populations in your condensation points, uh, 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 well, is, is disturbed, it's no, no longer the same. Uh, and this is uh, the surface you calculate from the Hubbard model, and you can also make this uh, more quantitative uh, by uh, well, looking at slices of basically at slices of this uh, of this uh, uh, graph here, and uh, taking into account uh, local density approximation uh, because our system is finite, and then you get quantitative uh, for most of the cases at least a quantitative um, uh, agreement uh, with the theory. Uh, there's the theory is the green line, and the data is red dots and uh, the theory is without any, uh, um, uh, without any uh, fitting parameter. Okay, I promised at the end uh, and uh, I have uh, a couple of minutes uh, to, do, to do that, uh, to uh, discuss the possibility uh, to, uh, well, making that system even more interesting and uh, uh, getting into uh, something topological. Uh, this is the lattice I was talking about, uh, and uh, the point uh, that uh, these uh, gentlemen have uh, uh, sort of um, made and uh, shared with me is uh, that uh, you could uh, add something uh, to the lattice potential uh, to make every second deep lattice side a little less deep. Uh, so uh, to go uh, to uh, a lattice uh, which has c uh, three subclasses of lattice sides. Uh, but you only need a very small perturbation, uh, so there's not a lot uh, that, he, that one has to change. Uh, and what happens then uh, with a single particle band structure is basically uh, nothing uh, much interesting. Uh, in the ori original lattice uh, without this modification, this is where the Bose condensate uh, uh, lives at the end point, uh, and if you turn on uh, this extra perturbation uh, that uh, inserts a difference between the A1 and the A2 uh, uh, lattice sides, uh, then uh, the band structure changes here uh, between M and X, uh, the M point and the X point a little bit, uh, but uh, the condensation point is the same and uh, um, nothing, nothing much uh, of interest is actually happening. However, uh, if you look at the order parameter, uh, the expectation is uh, that you go from this order parameter to this order parameter. You see. Uh, this is the order parameter I've shown you before. Uh, we have staggered angular momentum and plaquette currents, uh, also staggered uh, from plaquette to plaquette. 
Uh, now, what happens if you insert uh, this uh, chemical potential difference uh, for A1 and A2 sites is uh, that every second uh, plaquette uh, sort of uh, gets depopulated. Uh, and uh, if you do that, uh, what is happening here is uh, that you go from staggered angular momentum uh, to rectified angular momentum. Uh, and uh, <coughs> that is uh, a situation uh, that gives rise uh, to uh, topolog uh, topological physics. As I want to uh, convince you of here, uh, if you uh, look at the excitation spectra uh, of these, uh, two, in these two cases, uh, for the original lattice and uh, the modified lattice, and you see uh, that uh, for most of uh, the excitation spectrum, uh, things look exactly the same. However, uh, there's uh, uh, this area here where you see there's a gap opening, uh, and uh, what is happen, uh, if, happening if you go from here to here is uh, that you undergo a topological phase transition into a situation uh, where you have uh, uh, a, a topological gap and uh, you can calculate uh, that this gap uh, uh, possesses a chiral uh, edge states and uh, is, uh, the, the bands are then, uh, 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 they possess a churn uh, invariant, uh, which is two uh, in this case. So this is, uh, uh, my outlook, and uh, I'm uh, about to summarize. Um, I've shown you uh, that uh, long-lived condensates uh, can, for, can be formed at higher bands uh, if you use a bipartite lattice geometry, and there are many other possibilities how you uh, can do that. It doesn't have to be a, a square lattice, really. Uh, I've shown you a physics in the second band uh, where two degenerate condensation points exist. Uh, that you can populate. Uh, uh, if you do that, uh, an interference experiment reveals uh, that uh, there's a fixed relative phase between the condensates uh, formed at x plus and x minus, uh, and uh, interaction favors chiral superfluid order. Um, yeah, and uh, finally, in the outlook, uh, uh, I have uh, hope uh, that I've convinced you uh, that there's interaction induced a topological excitation if you uh, have a way uh, to rectify the angular momentum, uh, which is uh, very easily doing, uh, doable in our experiment. Uh, there's more uh, that you could read about in this uh, publication uh, if you want. Uh, we have also created condensates in the fourth band and the seventh band uh, where there's a little bit different physics, uh, but also interesting. Um, well, finally, I want to show you uh, my collaborators. Um, we have... Uh, great theory of support in Hamburg by Ludwig Matai, who is here uh, somewhere. Um, Van Min, uh, from postdoc of uh, Ludwig. And uh, we also have uh, a very fruitful co collaboration uh, with uh, Christiane Moray-Smith uh, from Utrecht University. And uh, also uh, uh, in China with uh, 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 Xifang uh, Shu and uh, um, and Liu and uh, uh, Vincent Liu, and um, definitely uh, experiments uh, need an experimental team. Uh, we have uh, our boson team uh, with Karl Hippler, who's a PhD student, and Togo Koch, uh, who is a postdoc at the moment. Uh, former students Georg Wirt and Matthias Oeschliger have very much contributed uh, to all this. And uh, we have also a fermion experiment, uh, which I have not talked about, where we're fighting hard uh, and uh, nevertheless doing all the mistakes uh, you can do. Uh, <clears throat> but at some point, we will have fermions uh, and hope we will uh, put them into higher bands uh, soon. Um, <clears throat> well, and finally, I want to uh, close uh, with uh, drawing your attention uh, to a new initiative uh, by uh, these people here, Frank Wilczek, uh, who is the chief scientist of this, uh, Vincent Liu, and Hongwei Shong, uh, an initiative uh, to set up uh, a new uh, center for theoretical physics in Hangzhou in China. And uh, if you are interested to know more about that, uh, you, you can address me after the talk. And with that, I want to say thank you uh, for listening and, uh, uh, well, giving you your time. And, uh, uh, well, and I also, I'm ready now uh, to answer your question if you have any. Okay, thank you for the fascinating talk. Uh, open to questions and comments. Uh, 
Um, Andreas, you showed a very nice job for engineering the uh, topological bands, but uh, I'm wondering if you can uh, furthermore to create some like um, uh, topological many-body interactions or in those lattice or uh, you, you have it already or? Um, well, um, I've not shown you any experiments on that. Uh, this is something that we are, well, which is work in progress. Uh, we are trying to do something along these lines. Uh, the kind of uh, topological phase transition uh, that I've uh, pointed out to you uh, is interaction driven. Uh, so that makes it different uh, from some others uh, that uh, you see in the literature uh, where you engineer some gauge fields uh, <coughs> that introduce uh, your topology. Uh, here, it's, uh, uh, interaction is crucial. <coughs> Over there? Yeah. There's a question there. Uh, I have a question about your interference experiment. You use this interference experiment to show that you have this imaginary phase, or in other words, that what you have on one plaquette is sort of Px plus Ipy. But then you later mentioned that what you have is sort of a staggered chirality. Wouldn't that mean that the phase of the interference is sort of changing for every other unit cell? Yes. But you still, you were able to observe a global interference and not something which has averaged out. Yeah. Uh, this, this is a very uh, good question. And uh, it, it takes a bit of uh, meditation uh, to to understand, uh, the, even for us, uh, to understand uh, uh, this ex experiment. Uh, uh, yes, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's absolutely true. Uh, uh, there's a Z2 uh, symmetry in, in this business. Uh, you can have, uh, uh, well, in the two sectors, uh, uh, above and below uh, the light sheet, uh, you can have either Px plus Ipy in some given plaquette, uh, and then in in the law, in the plaquette that is associated uh, below uh, the light sheet, uh, you can have Px minus Ipy. Uh, uh, so you can have 180 degree or zero degree. Uh, and this is exactly what you see in this, uh, this experiment. Uh, yeah. Okay, then if there is no more questions, then let's thank the, all the speakers of this session. And then this is the end of the session. <laughs> Uh, we are five minutes behind schedule, but still we will have 25-minute coffee break and uh, 